Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus again. I am Trace. This is episode 4 of 5 in our weather series. If you've never watched our show before, we take a big topic, we break it into five different episodes, and then we talk about it in a series. This week is weather, and by now we've talked about extinction events, we've talked about how weather can affect wars, we've talked about the difference between weather and climate, and how we know that global climate change is a real thing. But what about ancient men? Ancient men and women were living outside, right? They didn't have houses, they didn't have central air. So how did they deal with the weather? So right now, and for the last 10,000 years or so, we've been in a fairly stable climate situation. The Earth's climate system, however, it went through a series of abrupt oscillations and reorganizations during the last ice age, which was between 18,000 years ago and 80,000 years ago. They last for a while. Our climate represents this interglacial period that began, again, about 10,000 years ago. Ice ages are pretty rough. It's a cold period for thousands of years, and they happen about every 100,000 years. So we're currently in the middle between two ice ages. The thing is, we came up during an ice age. Humanity was around for a couple million years. We've had ancestors living on this planet. In the last few hundred thousand years, they've been evolving. You can check that out in our human series. If you haven't listened to it, download that one. But regardless, we eventually got out of the Ice Age and we started living our lives on this pretty warm planet. It's a very temperate climate. And we started learning about our weather. One of those things that happens when you know humans come together and we start learning about the things around us is we start forming societies and we start forming traditions. And one of those traditions that gets a bad rap is rain dancing. This is a ritual uh, in a lot of native societies and indigenous cultures where folks would dance and to imitate wind and to invoke the rain from the spirits or the gods. And they wanted to pay homage and they wanted a good season because they understood how weather patterns worked, but they inter didn't understand the intricacies of them. They just knew that rain would come now or that would not come now and they would look for it at specific times of year. So Sonny Skyhawk, he's a Siganu Lakota. Uh, he's also a filmmaker, maybe you've seen him in movies. He's actually pretty famous. And he says, yes, we had special dances that paid homage to certain things and especially the seasons. And yes, we prayed for rain, and sometimes we had dances that wished our rain on our corn or on fields or crops, as well as on our tribal enemies. Which brings us back to warfare and weather. When our warriors or medicine people painted our horses for battle, they painted their rumps with raindrops, so as to wish rain on the enemy, for rain to wash away our tracks when we went to raid or acquire horses from other tribes. Water has always been considered equal to medicine amongst our people, mainly because without it, we cease to survive as humans. This is uh, an understanding of the weather that some modern people don't grasp. Native Americans in the Midwestern parts of the United States, what is now the modern United States, often tracked and followed known weather patterns. And they would offer to perform rain dances for settlers in return to trade items because they understood the weather better than the people who were settling that land. It was a, it was a little, it was pretty clever, actually, if you think about it. And even the U.S. government fell for it. And in 1891, Congress spent $19,000 to conduct rainmaking tests in Texas under the guidance of a guy named Robert Dryenforth. I've read about this guy, super interesting fella. He was influenced by a publication that said rain was caused by the loud noises of explosions because it would often rain after battles. And they didn't know why, but they figured it was the explosions. So he set up a series of 68 highly explosive balloons filled with hydrogen and oxygen, and they blasted away up at the skies trying to make it rain in places where it hadn't recently. And uh, they even fired mortars from cannons and sent kites up carrying sticks of dynamite. They did all sorts of stuff. Turns out, of course, explosives don't really make rain. But whatever. It wasn't just the Native Americans and indigenous here in North America that understood weather patterns. The ancient Mayans uh, have something called the Mayan water temple. It was found by archaeologists. And it, what happened is it, it was this pool of water and people would offer up sacrifices to the rain god whose name was Shock. He would drop these items into the Clara Blanca pools. This is in Belize, by the way. And because we found those items today and we dated them, we can get a good picture of how the climate was running back at this time period during, during the ancient Mayan culture. And for the Mayans, just like for the natives here, it all came down to rain. 
their empire rose to prominence during a pretty rainy period in Earth's climate history. There was plenty of water, there was plenty of food, and that meant that you could have a pretty hardy population who was very healthy. However, once a drought came, they could find a lot more items sacrificed to the rain god, the Clara Blanca pools. And they think that this might be when the Mayans started experiencing hardships and perhaps even crumbled which is pretty crazy, all because of the weather. But for more about these, by the way, you can check out an episode from uh, one of our sister shows over at Seeker Daily. It's all about the Clara Blanca pools. They're beautiful. So then, as modern technology and the Industrial Revolution spread across the planet, the 19th century meteorologist James Pollard Espy developed a convection theory of storms. It was one of the first times we started really studying how air moved and how humidity could change and sweep around a planet. And it was hard to study on a planetary capacity until we had satellites and we could look down on the Earth from far, far away. But this was some of the first studies and they found that heated air rises, expands, and then cools and water vapor condenses and it becomes rain or snow, the beginnings of the understanding of the water cycle. And he was convinced that he knew how to produce rain on a schedule, that he could create a prediction model and then build it out and create a machine that could do it. He spent decades proposing that Congress pay him to create forest fires at regular intervals of 20 miles in a north-south line extending for 600 miles. And those forest fires would be able to kind of cause rain. In 1838, Senator John Crittenden of Kentucky warned that even if Espy's proposal would work, that he might enshroud us in continual clouds <laughs> and indeed falsify the promise that the earth should be mo no more submerged and if he possesses the power of causing rain, he may also possess the power of withholding it. Sounds pretty, pretty scary. But when you think about that, when we think about how our weather affects us throughout our history, we're not just thinking about North Americans, Central Americans, and modern Americans. We also have to think about the whole planet. Deserts have changed and grown. Even since we've started monitoring them, certain deserts around our planet have gotten larger. Rainforests have gotten smaller. Snowpacks, like here in California, have gotten lesser. And things are changing all over the planet. Now, whether we're doing that or it's a natural process, you'll have to check out our other chunk on that. But is this really that different to say we want rain now? and what we're doing now to try and get it to fall on us. In November of 2007, Georgia was in one of the worst droughts in decades. And the governor of Georgia, Sonny Perdue, along with lawmakers, local ministers, probably members of the public, stood on the steps of the state capitol and prayed for rain. Is that really that different from rain dances, from sacrifices to the god shock, from trying to hire some guy to light forest fires and make it rain. It's not really. We gotta do whatever we can because the weather can affect us all. What ancient practices have you heard in terms of the weather? Why don't you let me know that down in the comments? Maybe something native to your country if you aren't from the United States. Also, you should subscribe so you get more Test Tube Plus every single day of the week. We are here. This was episode four of five on weather. Make sure you come back tomorrow because we're gonna talk about the future of weather and how we might be changing it in some big ways. Thanks for watching, I'm Trace. We'll see you tomorrow.